Boys and girls, Alex back again. And if you haven't got a favourite puzzle master, you can feel free to call me your favourite puzzle master. This little puzzle is made from what the woodsmiths, well, woodsmith plans call clever puzzle boxes. Um, look, they advertise you make it out of... Uh, solids with a lot of uh, dado cuts and all that and I happen to be bloody lazy as you've probably gathered so I've transposed it using SketchUp well sorry I'll rephrase that I imported it into SketchUp and I transposed it into what I'd classify as um, three millimeter layered um, sides or parts. Now effectively what I've done is uh, where you can see maybe in the plans here I might uh, try and bring it up in uh, in the video um, a close-up but you might see it here um, it's got a lot of dados and sliding bits and pieces and all that, which, uh, look, I can quite easily do, but at the end of the day, I want to exploit my laser. So the way to do that, I thought, well, is to break, laminate them, break them up into pieces. Now, these are what's going to be the dividers. There's two of them, and you'll find that there's three pieces that... When laminated together, and I use dowel alignments and all that, you'll appreciate that you suddenly now start getting these little tongues that will slide down and fit into grooves and all that. And that's how all these is going to, well, hopefully fit together. That's the dividers. Now, where the hell is the thing? All right, that's the dividers. This is the front, which is going to be the trickiest bit because it's got to have a key in it. And again, um, the key is designed to be a dovetail. Laser doesn't cut dovetails or doesn't cut on an angle. So I've devised another way. That's why there's so many pieces. The back, that should be three pieces. From then on, every other thing should be three pieces. The top, three pieces. The sides, they also have three pieces, but the little buggers, they have so many little um, channels and grooves. And if you have a look, you'll see something like, <coughs> I'll just pretend to put it together. That'll go in like that. This, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> should go on there like that now what I've done I've got hopefully look it looks very thin if I can get exactly two mil there um, toothpicks and I've got some good quality ones so maybe they'll work and they won't split um, but theoretically once put hang on I don't know how much of this you're getting. Let's see whether you're actually getting all that shit in. Yeah, you're just getting it in. Now that I move it back there. Um, and the, the, anyway, there's all these little bits and pieces to be glued on. So that's going to be tricky with the sides. And then you've got the bottom. Now... All it is is going to be simple dowel alignment. They're six mil dowels. They're two mil. Actually, I'm going to get get one. Hang on. As you can see again, well prepared. Here we are. These are upper class toothpicks. Well, I actually bought them more so for my model car, uh, model mo models. Only because it's got this, oh, sort of like shaping on the top, which, where, where is it? Here we go. I don't know whether you can actually see it. 
but uh, it's got some work on it, which would make, I thought, an attractive gear lever, gear stick or whatever in trucks. But, they, because they seem to be done on a lathe of some sort, I'm hoping that they will fit into these much better than the others without bulging that out too much. Um, well, it seems to fit okay, although I'm sceptical whether it actually bulges the sides out which will impede the runner, but a bit of sanding should fix that. Anyway, with a bit of luck, that'll work. <coughs> now, again, I'm not going to bore your shitless with the glue up. You could imagine you're just going to be getting 6mm dowels, putting it through layer of glue, stick it together, layer of glue, stick it together, and hopefully I'll get the profile that I'm supposed to have in there. And when I've done that, then I'll come back to the video and with a bit of luck, uh, see if it gets together properly. So, uru for now. But, I mean, uru for a few minutes in the video. Well, I've got you here. Here's another little trick I use when I'm making my dowels. Um, I use this little gizmo on my drill. It's really designed to deburr bolts and nuts and all that. I just give it a quick run. What it does is it chamfers the ends a bit. So when I try and push that into a 6mm hole, which it won't go in because that's only a bloody 4mm hole, but you get what I mean, it'll actually uh, um, slip in easy. And even though I've got a bum right hand with this jab saw, it's great. One pull and I've got the 6mm dowel in there. 24 more to go. Now you might see it, a nice little chamfer on the saw edge there without having to oops there we go without having to use sandpaper well we've done the assembly so far we you've done a bugger all I did all the assembly so I've done the assembly as you can see well hopefully you might be able to see um, laminated three pieces um, the bottom piece actually extends, so you've now got the channel down there. Some of them, look, I've tried to fill some of the uh, dowel alignment holes because um, depending on how I cut it off, look different. But uh, again, a few pieces, as you can see, I've got them there, so there to be sanded and I'm sure you really want to see, shut up, see me sand, so here you go. You might not think much of it, it's actually a tricky situation because I do have to try and make sure I uh, don't round over the edges. Um, you do have the tendency. I probably would be better off doing it on my uh, upside down Ross, um, which is really what I intended to do with the smaller pieces and use this for the bigger pieces. So uh, um, I'm going to do that and then we'll see if we can sort of like see where we go with the dry fit. Rossed it and now ready for a dry fit. But before I go, here we go again. Um, I just found out, I, I think I might have mentioned another video. I've been playing around with, uh, I always play around with my little frogs. Although I've got to remember that they're called geckos. 
The beautiful thing about these little three pieces is to try and figure out how many different positions you can get these three in. Um, that's naturally with their tails pointed in. Pull this out. Heads pointed in. Although you probably can't see me doing it. There you are, heads pointed in. And the various other... Anyway, that's bullshit. Done enough time on that. Really what needs to be done now is that's the base um, two dividers or well that's what I call them you can call them whatever you bloody will like it's not going to make any difference to me and it's not going to make any difference to the assembly how's that now off the laser they should fit snugly and there you have it that's that now to put the side in now I've got to find out how these work and by the looks of it they're perfectly symmetrical so it doesn't matter which one I put in where but those bits oh I've got to get this right there you are. They should slide along on. Oh, don't watch it. I've got to be careful breaking it because these little pieces are quite fragile. They're held on by 2mm dowels. That's 3mm, so the sort of support is only 0.5 of a mil, and 0.5 of a mil in MDF is not what I'd risk my life on. Now that should go in there but I've got to make sure that these line up when I press them in. Now will they do the trick? That doesn't want to go. Well, oh yeah, a bit of, I don't want to force it because, well I'm forcing it, is that delaminating? No it's not, um, because I'll never get it apart again. Oops, that's, well not oops, I hear cracking, but it's going together, but then hopefully, such a tight fit, I don't need to glue, it will sit together and, let's hope, oh look at that, whoa, well so far so good, I, I don't know how, what I'll be like pulling it apart, I probably won't, Let's try this little sucker. That's not how it goes together, donkey dick. Oh, I wish, but no. Um, let's. Oh! That snapped in too easy, which, well, it's not bad. Oh, and I'm hearing all these snap crackles, no pops. Again, for all it's worth, that's all laser done. Now the problem is I've got that there. These things are supposed to slide. Well, holy shit, look at that. And did I make the clearance? By the looks of it, I might have. That goes there. Now, hopefully, this fits in there like that. That's in, Jesus Christ, this is, this is, this is, well, it's got me going. Because, you see, that's supposed to, well, we'll see how the 
this slides along now. I might have to, I don't know, do some, no, holy shit, oh, that's not sliding too easy, which is not good. I might have to do a bit of sanding there. Oh God, this arm, I've got no strength. Out that way again still. Yeah, I might have to do a bit of sanding to get this right, which is not what I wanted because I finished up losing that char. So, as you can see, this is as far as it'll go. Um, oh, shit, that came apart a bit easier than I expected. Um, which means I might have to put a bit of glue on, but if I, hang on. One good thing about this is once I've done it a cup shit, there you are, I've broken something off already. That it's only a little bit that's break. Not that that should matter because it's only a channel and it's on the inside so you can't see it. But still, it just goes to prove that oh shit. Well, there you have it. Maybe that bit breaking off might help, but that still doesn't help this exercise. Because I don't know where the... Oh, shit, here we go. Ah! Look, I'm going to... Well, it's getting late now. Not that you'd bloody know it, but it's getting close to tea time. And I don't want to turn into a, well, we won't say, because of political correctness. So uh, I might just go and have some tea and uh, come back to it later on, although the chances are it'll be bloody tomorrow. But I will have to, oh, hang on. Yeah, I might, oh, yeah well, I will have to do a bit of uh, doctoring on that. Um, hell I've wasted enough movies so uh, all right I shall be back later uh, well not uh, well I'm back I've done a bit of uh, um, what do you call it planing and sanding I use this it's a beautiful Lee, Nee Lee Nielsen I can't remember what it's bloody called I can never remember that's why I hate hand tools I can always say, ah, oh, it's a quarter this and a quarter that, but what's the difference between this and this, other than, a, you know, maybe a hundred bucks? <laughs> um, uh, but this goes right to the edge, which means it's like a shoulder plane. Well, that could be what it is, but it's not. It's, uh, uh, it's also got these little cutting edges with get, get in the corner. But anyway, unless it's a shoulder block plane, um, I can actually get right in. The other thing that I did use, I've made this, uh, and you know, I hope you can see it, I'll bring it up closer. It's sort of like, a, it's not a square, it's a square on that side, but it's angled on that side. And naturally it's, uh, what do you call it, it's got a starter on the bottom, so I can act, use uh, Velcro hook and loop type of stuff on there which is actually quite good and oh look this has been my saver in so many things because as I said 90 degrees will get me in there and keep it perfect and I can actually get in and get into the right into the corner uh, with that I've also run down the edge with this on both sides and I was actually just just about to crack the champagne and say, yeah, hey, look at it, look at it, it fits. Slid down like a beauty, but that went the wrong way because that's the back, you can tell because this is a key. So I had to try it this way. And as you can see, even with my dodgy hand, one finger, it slides in. Now to try the back, 
that should hopefully slip in there and if that's level that should slip in there like that and that now that bit locks that bit in oh holy shit so far so good um, as you can see like if you pull that forward you can then theoretically push this down come on baby come down um, yep and then everything why actually oh that falls out but doesn't matter it uh, Yeah, my tolerances could have been a bit better. This back here, I could have made, as you can see, you can lift it out. However, having said that, once you push the lid in, oh yeah, it does move. I'll have to, actually, I might have to redo this and make that bit a little bit wider and this yeah um, that's well actually that, that's a problem with this uh, lamination um, yeah it's the tolerances are just not oh, I could give it a oh probably five mil or an extra mil at least. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm planning as I'm talking, so uh, yeah, we, we've probably got hell close to three mil. So if I give that a mil each side, it's a pain in the ass because I've got to then relaminate and all that, but that's not a problem. Well, when we say it's not a problem, of course it's a bloody problem. Um, now, where's the front? Shit, hasn't even been sanded at all yet. That's not going to get me too far. Hang on, I'll be back in a sec. Finish with the Ross. You'll be the first to see this. This is the front. I haven't got the key in there yet. Where the hell is the little slider? Oh, God almighty. It's here somewhere, oh, I'll leave it, well I've got to find it because the bloody puzzle's useless without it. It's here somewhere. I will go and look for it maybe off camera but I don't need it for this exercise. I just want to see if this now slides in and is loose. Yeah, that's loose too. Now, all this might have, no, hang on. Sorry. Push that in, bloody lid probably won't fit on. I don't know. Because what I did do is, I reckon that's, that's what I buggered up. Because I did expand the dividers by about a mil, thinking yeah, I did actually to compensate for it and I I think I've just buggered it up. So that's annoying because I've now got to make the front as well bigger by a so I said the mill that I extended it to and it's easier. Because that, that that's a whole idea of hang on, make sure this come on baby. Don't tell me you won't go down. That's not right, there's something amiss here. That is definitely not right. Okay, I'm back. And who says only women can multitask? While I was waiting for the glue to dry, I actually made one of these. 
I don't know how well you can see it. It's actually a battery holder. Can you see that? Oh yeah, it's sort of in there. Yeah, I uh, made the battery holder lit too, you know, sort of like hope this will work. Oops. That didn't look too good. Come on. Now if I put them how do I make sure that they all roll down the same way? Yeah. Then they pop out and you take a battery. That one pops out, take a battery. Hey! That's quite neat, you know, I might even make a few of these. This was actually taken off a pattern by Steve Good. Um, that I thought I'd uh, make up while I'm waiting for the glue to dry. But then I had to wait for the glue of this to dry before I could go back to that. So stuff this multitasking bullshit, I'll go back to single tasking. And I won't confuse myself, so I put that out of the way. Let's get back to the box. I found a new front face for it. Oh, there we are, here we are. Um, I haven't glue finished gluing it up because I'm waiting for that glue to... doesn't matter. So, but, this now slips in and it doesn't fall out. I've got to still tidy it up. I'll, I'll do that once I glue this up and all that. I was just testing the fit. Now, theoretically, as I say, when this goes out, that should be able to go down far enough for this to go forward. Now, hang on, I'll just put the back in. Come on, maybe. This is sort of like letting you, showing you the solution, which I probably shouldn't be doing. Come on. It's a bit tricky, this. It's a... Uh, Come on, there you go, that's locked, and then this comes out. Now assuming that that little doovie is in there, which I haven't got, that would lock this front and you can't move it. But the beauty of it is you can move the back part, you'll be able to move a few other parts, which is confusing, but the whole secret will be, and I'm being a bit premature because I'm excited, you pull that aside, that should let that front drop down enough. Come on, baby. That's all it really needs to bring the lid forward so you can disengage this little hook down here. And I'll show you what it is because the back lip goes in there. So basically what you can do is bring that down, then you can take the lid off and voila, you can see what's inside. It's a bloody empty box. But anyway, that's the theory behind it, but again, um, I've got to tidy this up and I'll get back to you. And then I might even fill this up with more batteries. And uh, yeah, holy shit. You know, um, oh no, I can't take the credit for this. Steve Good, check him out. He's got a lot of great videos and he gives it away for free. So get on there, give him a donation or something. Anyway, I'll be back. Maybe. Okay, I'm back with the box. Actually, I've just come, come downstairs from upstairs. Usually you come downstairs from upstairs, not the, anyway. Um, yeah, we've just been uh, uh, given the news that uh, Buddy COVID's uh, probably going rife again in Victoria. So I should be wearing a mask because of all my other personalities. However, I know the other bastard won't be wearing one, so I'm not wearing one. Okay, the box has been semi-assembled. I've glued on the dividers, glued on one of the sides to the base. Now, just a few little features of the box. The way I've laminated it, I'll look, look at the back for a start. Laminated it, well, with this in three layers. So this outer layer will give me a runner. That's just a cover. That's the same thing with most of them. And as you can see, um, I've actually glued this little 
runner along there using uh, two mil dowel, not not dowels, actually toothpicks. I discovered I actually had these little buggers that I bought a while back only because there's a bit of a profile on the end that I thought would make great gear sticks. I haven't used them but I found them and these are as close to a 2 mil diameter as you can get, better than all those other cruddy um, toothpicks I bought in our, our supermarket stores that range from 1 mil to 3 mil. But anyway, that's another story. They all serve a little purpose, like this is the back piece. What it actually does is it's got this groove here that, no, that's uh, side, let's go into the back, that that sits in there like that, if you can see. Um, all that does is it stops this back from moving up or down. And you'll see more of that later, but that's the whole concept of that. The front has a key. That key gets located into this little receptacle. And again, you'll see how it does, but that's the function of it. And that's the reason why I couldn't glue it up first. Because this has to go in there. I, if I glued the side on, uh, hang on, yeah. If I glued the side on, I couldn't push this down because of that key. So what I had to do was put this in, locate the key, and then I can put the side on. Which makes it hard because I now can't um, get inside to polish it once I put the side on. The side on goes on easier if you turn it the right way up. I've got these keys in the dividers and I was trying to put it in upside down so let's go if I put it in the right way it should snap into place quite easily yet it's still quite a comfortable fit. Now I haven't glued this for the demo purposes but what I will do is I'll switch the camera off, assemble it and then show you how to unassemble it. Well not unassemble it, solve the puzzle, I'm going to bloody unassemble it. Okay, I'm back again. The box has been assembled. Not glued yet, so it's still tight enough. But it's assembled and ready to show you the solving. Now I do need a third pair of hands, so I'll pretend this is my third hand and believe me, get more use out of this than this bloody hand that's still dodgy. I'll put that up there so you can then see the thing in operation. What you do is this little slider zips off to the side. Isn't that clever? Now this front drops down. It drops down enough that you can pull the lid forward. Hang on, let's slip this up. Now that you've pulled the lid forward, you can then drop this back because remember I showed you that that top sat in that little little uh, thing stopping it from going up and down, right? When you move the lid forward, that can now go down. Once you've got it down, you can actually pull the lid away and lo and behold, you can see a tool in there just to prove to all you dumb bums that Cara does have hand tools. Um, it's one of those uh, bullnose uh, chisels. Shit, bloody sharp too. Oops, sorry, you can't even see it. Bullnose chisel sharp. Hasn't had much use. Um, only because it's so bloody sharp, I don't know how to use it properly. I haven't set the depth properly. And every time I try to do it, it just digs in. Hang on, let's see how... Oh, well, look. Oh, shit. It does work. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, we're not here to demonstrate that again. We always keep digressing. Now, that's a box to, naturally, to put it back together. Yeah. Slip the lid back on move it forward and up, bring that back up, fiddle around with that until that fits, bring the front up, move the slider across, that locks the front, and there you have it, um, a 
puzzle box without the plane in there to make it easier to flip over and it won't rattle. But yeah, that's it. Now, look, I'm in two minds whether to stain it, because staining darkens this up a bit. I do need to buff it up. Again, with the tight tolerance of the laser, I really can't afford to put any finish on it other than maybe basic oil because any other finish like even wipe on poly or whatever will add a layer that will make it jam or not move so easy and if I can make it move well bugger it um, it'll scratch the finish off so why put it on so anyway my option is to tongue oil it and then maybe buff it up I'm sort of tempted to stain it black but my biggest problem with staining it black let's bring this down just to prove that I can do it twice in a row hope this will work as well as this when I actually glue the side on um, but as I said if I stain it black then I've got to worry about well no I could stain yeah the, the stain um, I, I don't know whether it rubs off on your hands after it cures I've never got that far because usually when I stain things um, I just about paint over it the next uh, couple of hours so I don't know whether if I let the stain dry for about three or four days whether it will rub off on your hands and uh, on the outside I can polish it off but on the inside I can't so I've got to put up with raw stain on the inside now I might have a bit of a play around with it um, because ideally I wouldn't mind this being a little black box only because it will hide all the char marks a uh, few blemishes of the MDF oh Christ come on am I putting this here there you are. put it in the right way you donkey dick hang on come on there push it forward bring that up wiggle that into place that up there that across there and there it is and yeah I reckon a black box would look better but I've got to experiment so your chances are you'll see it as a black box but it'll be probably after three or four days when I've played around with it so if you can put up with me waiting for three or four days um, good luck to you here I am back with the box as you can see it hasn't been painted yet but I have decided to paint it but I just thought I'd show you show you whoops see ha ha already worked show you a little addition I made whoops now this is going to be difficult because I haven't trained this new Oh bugger, new change to the box. What I've done is made, again I haven't glued this side on yet so I can take the front out, I made the back because this has now got two layers of facing and the original back only had one I thought, oh damn it, you know, they sort of look out of place. So rather than that, I thought I'd make this, a dub, the back, a double layer. And then I thought to myself, hey, just as a twist, I'll add a slider in there as well. So both the front and back will have a slider. This will serve no purpose. You're just going to have a small block in there uh, just to limit its movement. But it actually serves no real function other than to... It's not adding to the complexity of the puzzle, it just adds to the confusion of the user. Um, I have been tossing up whether I should flop this 
or just uh, painted black. And the more I think about it, I think, um, hell, it's a puzzle box. It's not going to be a neat storage box. Me, I didn't even put it together again properly. Um, it's not going to be a neat storage box. It's uh, just really going to be, as I said, a puzzle box. So why flock it, you know, I mean, well, yeah, I don't know. No, no bugger it, I'm not going to. I refuse to. Refuse, absolutely refuse. Refuse, like rubbish. Um, yeah, so the next time you'll see it, uh, hopefully, it'll be stained. Well, quite a few days later and I'm back again. We're still in lockdown, so really don't expect this part of the video to be any more sane than the previous few frames before it. Some of the more observant ones of you have real, might have realised I did paint it black. Lo and behold, it's black. Um, and there you have it. Um, I was concerned about the black rubbing off. However, I think my problem used to be that uh, I didn't give it enough time to dry. I've given it about two or three days to dry and it didn't rub off. And not only that, buff. Oh, I gave it a coat of tongue oil, which took about a week for it to cure. And I gave it a quick buff on my wheel, uh, Beal wood buff, going through the typical three wax grits of, uh, oh God, what are they? Tripoli, White Diamond and Canuba. And it does come up quite well. Um, I think I might have mentioned that, yes, I've slipped in this dodgy little slider on the back end, which serves absolutely no useful purpose other than confuse the person. The action still is in the front, where you push the front across. Once you push it across, the front drops which will let you move the lid forward just those few hang on, make sure that goes all the way down those few, maybe one centimetre that will let the back drop down enough so you can then pull the lid all the way back revealing absolutely bloody nothing in the box um, I thought about it, but when you think about it this is a puzzle box, not an heirloom box I was thinking of flocking it, but bugger it, why? 99% um, of the people will never get to see the inside of it because it's too bloody difficult to solve. So why bother? Um, and when it's going to be locked up all the time, why not? And anyway, just to prove that uh, I didn't have that video in reverse, um, let's try and put it back together again. It's got to go down. Oh, make sure that goes all the way down. This has always been an issue, putting that in. The front has to be all the way down. That goes in. Now, this is the trickiest part. Getting that little notch in that groove. Sometimes it works first time, and sometimes it works the second time like it did then. This comes up. Make sure it's flat. Slides across, and she's locked and secure, and shit, there's not much black on my hand. There you have it. That's it, boys and girls. Um, until the next lockdown, another boring video, maybe. All I can say is, keep safe. Uru.